start with our vessel information. So we have a 42-foot sloop. It has a draft of 1.9 meters.
a clearance, an air clearance there. We have a race, which is a tidal stream, a very strong tidal stream. The Neptune Channel. And of course, coming out of Port Slade, let's have a look at the Almanac and see what that can tell us. This gives us some Southern Peninsula Passage information. Cape Dunn to Hamilton, Cape Dunn to Fitzroy Bay. We have some information about a danger point, Stevens Rock area, Sand Key Bay, danger point to Beauty Point. This one talks about Old Chapel Head, which is here. And the rocks, which are these inner, middle, outer rock. The flood stream runs in a southeasterly direction along the Lawrence Channel, which is this. and generally runs in this direction until high water Victoria, plus two. An eddy, which runs contrary to the mainstream, is evident close to the northeast coast of the southern peninsula. So, we're not going up there. The eddy is formed at the eastern extremity of Dawson Bay. There's a tidal height anomaly in Dawson Bay. Two factors contribute to an unusually large tidal range in Dawson Bay. Initially, the southeast going flood builds up in the Neptune Channel between Slade Island and Beauty Point. This narrow channel creates a choke point, increasing the sea height locally and causing the strong tidal flow through the races. So what we want to remember there is we don't want to have wind going opposite to the tidal stream. That will make it a very difficult passage. Secondly, a proportion of the southeast stream being restricted by the narrows of the Neptune Channel turns back on itself, creating a northwest going eddy. This further augments the tide raising effect within Dawson Bay and probably Beauty Bay as well. Fiddler's Race. Mariners should navigate with care when passage making through Fiddler's Race, working the tidal stream correctly, and having recent marine weather forecasts are vital prerequisites for planning a safe passage through the race. The area is well marked with five major lighthouses, however unmarked isolated rocks. 0.5 miles off 
the mainland coast, a three-mile ridge of rocks and islets runs northwest from a race extends out to one mile off Beauty Point. During spring tides and somewhat less at Neeps, the tidal streams within the 20-meter contour of Beauty Bay are weak. With an offshore wind, the southern part of the bay can make a suitable waiting anchorage. Dasher Rock Lighthouse is black and white checkered and off Raven Point, which is there. There are two isolated rocks situated east of Dasher Rock, and the race off Raven Point extends across the channel to Race Rock. Race Rock Lighthouse sits almost central in the race. The southeast part of the race is marked by Tintagel Lighthouse. There's Tintagel Island. The tidal stream runs up to 6.4 knots in Fiddler's Race, so the timing of the passage making through the race is of the essence making the most of slack water and therefore calmer seas, with wind against tide over bowls, that's these, extend across the race with, with dangerous sea conditions. At spring tides with an opposing wind greater than force five small craft should avoid the race when the tidal stream is running hard. from Tentagel to Renown Point, which is down there. Several rock ledges extend seawards from the steep two cliffs of the north coast of Fitzroy Bay. The unlit twin rocks. stand some 1.25 miles from the shoreline, so that will be these, and require due navigational care at night or in poor visibility. The rocks give good radar returns, Seal Island, and its adjoining rock, and Grumlin Head. So we've got that uh, transit light there. Unlit islands and dangerous rocks that extend out to one and a half miles abound the coastline between Iguana Point and Renown Point. You can see the shoreline there. So we definitely want to stay this side of these transits from Crumlin Head. Watch out for this mark here where we're going to come around and go into Black Mill Marina. Our other notes here is that tidal streams in Fitzroy Bay run up to a maximum of three knots at springs, roughly a north-south-south-north direction within the 20 meter contour, that's about here. The stream tends to follow the sweep of the bay. Inside the 10 meter line, the tidal stream is noticeably weaker, and he has brought Fitzroy, a busy ferry, general cargo and fishing port. Ferries, including high-speed craft, leave the harbor at frequent intervals and owners of small craft should maintain a good lookout. Mariners not entering port 
are advised to maintain a distance of at least 500 meters from the entrance. And so we're going to be coming around here. So that's knowing our notes for our passage. The first thing we'll do is find our tide times and heights. We will need the almanac. And we know that we're looking in the southern peninsula. Southern Peninsula is Port Fitzroy here because this is where we're traveling. Also, when we look at tidal streams, we're going to be using the tidal diamonds. The tidal diamonds. chart at different places. For example here, this one is labeled F. There's one here labeled C. So to find your title diamond, you go to the top of the chart. This will have tidal stream information on it. And what it says is tidal streams refer to high water at Victoria. Victoria is the standard port for the north. So all of the tidal streams will take their times from Victoria. So the first port we will do then is Victoria. The next port we need is Port Fitzroy. And then we'll need our second shaded areas. For summertime, we have to add an hour. But we're not worried about that because our time is 31st of October to the 1st of November. We'll probably be going through the race on the 1st, on the 31st of October. So we see we have Diamond in So that's when we'll get our Victoria tidal heights. So looking at October, we're in a shaded area. Blue is Neeps and red is Springs. So we're only two days out of Neeps. So we probably don't have to worry about a big tidal stream, or fast tidal stream. So for the 31st, we have a high water at 0613, 4.6 meters. Low water, 1210, 2.1 meters. Thirty-one, four point nine 
just before high tide. So, we'd say half an hour before 1831. We could say about 6 p.m. 1800. Um, depending on your time, maybe we'd be going through earlier, at the earlier high water, at 6.13. probably give you a time on an exam question that you want to leave or be somewhere. But this is what we're going to do to demonstrate. So we know that high water is going to be at, we'll say, 1831. Okay, and that's our high water. going to make a chart like this. And so we've got high water plus one and high water minus one. And that will be um, 1, the 1 hour before high water. So, we look at N, and we go 1 hour before high water is up here. So for this time, we would have 134 degrees is the direction of your tide, and the speed would be 2.7 knots. That's what we would expect to see right here in the Neptune channel at 6 p.m. Depending on what time we want to leave Port Slade. Let's have a look at Port Slade in the Almanac. some notes on tidal streams, lights and marks, and pilotage notes. VHF radio, facilities, anchorages, and special notes for the Neptune Islands. So we'll say we have no trouble coming through there. We're coming through the Neptune Channel, possibly at 6 p.m because we want to get through Fiddler's Race at about the slack or high water, so we don't have too much trouble with the tidal stream. Let's have a look at Black Mill. Now Black Mill is down to the south of Fiddler's Race. We have to go into Fitzroy Bay. there. 
has a transit here and a transit here. This is a bridge and it looks like it has 15 meter clearance. And here we have our pilotage notes for Black Mill. Standard port is Fitzroy and we find that information that direction in the book. We have the coordinates for this and it's in the southern peninsula which means that after we do our times we have to add an hour because we're effectively in European time. A small marina that by the nature of depth and height restrictions on the approach caters for small sailing vessels and motor yachts. Once under the road bridge, the shelter within the harbour is good and excellent in the marina. Approach difficult in northwest winds. Um, above four six in the narrow entrance. Alternative shelter should be sought. So that means if this is an exam question, you're going to find a good anchorage point in case of weather being adverse. So you look here for anchorages, possibly here. Watch out for these rocks that we read about. Also, you could use Beauty Bay, but keeping in mind you still have to navigate Fiddler's Race. We have pilotage notes. Vessels making for Black Mill must keep clear of the Boyd Approach Channel to Port Fitzroy. And we've seen that here. Seal Island is unlit but covered okay, by the light. And there's Seal Island there. about those transit lights, the flashing red, least water at the bar is 0 0.5 meters and generally 2.2 .2 meters in the river. So we have a bar to cross that will be this sand bar here. So we can see that it's 0 0.5 meters marked at chart datum. That is the lowest height recorded. So we have to know when we can cross that bar and still have enough clearance under the bridge. So we have a bar. It's 0 0.5 meters. Let's have a look at secondary port. We've got our times for Port Fitzroy, and we need our times and heights for Black Mill so that we can cross the bar, go under the bridge, and into the marina. How do we do secondary ports? This chart gives us times and heights differences. So the differences from the standard port of Port Fitzroy to calculate Black Mill. So with Port Fitzroy we have a high water of 0759 and 2052. Now because we're probably coming in the evening we're going to work with the later high water which is at 2052. We're going to have a time difference of five minutes. And then we work out our height as well. So the first thing we're going to do is make a crocodile chart. Now there are several ways to do secondary port. And uh, if you'd like to see me do some more of them, 
there's a link there for you. No, I don't, don't need the ruler at this moment. What we're going to do is just go by one centimeter. Now these need to be six hours from high water to low water. This is what we do know. We know that at 2100 we have a difference of plus five minutes in time. Right? Looks like minutes. And our time is Uh, an 
up-to-date almanac is what you want there. Here's our height difference. So we have mean high water springs, mean high water neaps, mean low water springs, and mean low water neaps. We are just two days away from neaps, so we're close to neaps. Exactly how close, that's what we want to find out. So we're going to do our high water because that's what we want. We have exactly 5.4 meters of height, which means we're going to have minus 0.2 meters, which is very easy to calculate. We don't need our chart at all if we were using our chart. We'd put our correction here. Um, point two. And our 5.4 height okay. minus point 0.2 meters. So we're going to have a high water height of 5.2 meters. So there we have our Black Mill Bridge high water time and height. So what we have here is if we cross this at high water, again we're probably not going to get there at high water, but we'll have 5.2 meters over 0.5 meters of chart datum which gives us 5.7 meters of water. Now, we have a boat with a 1.9 meter draft. So we want to know, we want to know how long, how big is our window to cross that sandbar. Well, let's do our size. If I were doing this in real life, instead of an exam, I would just round up to the nearest hour because it's three minutes away. So in essence, this would be 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and so on. Now we know we're near Neeps, but we want to know exactly what the difference is. So our height is going to be 5.2. right on the mean high water neeps because we're right next to neeps and our low water is 1.4 so we have one we're right there which means we're right at neeps we don't have to do any so we take this line and make it a little bit darker. We've made our line there. So that's our chart datum of mean high water, mean low water, neeps. We're right next to neeps. All right. 
so we want to know what the height of water is at 9 p.m. Alright, and let's say 7 p.m. Alright, we're going to go up there and we go to the blue line near Neebs. We come across here until we find our line and up. So at 7 p.m. we're going to have 4.5. Alright, so that's going to be 4.5 meters. So for example, if we're going to cross the bar at 7 p.m. So saying we get down there in time, we would have a height over the bar that is 0.5 meters of 4.5, so we'd have 5 meters of water over that bar, and we can do that for each of our times. If we get there at 9 p.m., alright, we go up here, we're at high water, and we have a height of 5.4. is our line, and we've got a height of about 5 meters at 10 p.m. So 5.5 meters over the bar at 10 p.m. What we want to know is how long do we have to get over that bar. So we have a draft of 1.9 meters to be safe say we need about two meters, okay? We need two meters of water at least below the keel to cross that bar. So we go along this line and find two meters, which is there. that line until we hit Neeps over here, and that's going to be at 1 p.m., uh, 1 a.m., so we have between 4 p.m. on that afternoon and 1 a.m. the next morning to cross that bar with a good um, two meters, at least two meters of water under the boat. Let's have a look at what that means. So, there's our boat looking from the back with its keel, and there's the water. So what we have is a height here of 1.9 meters. And if we were to get to that bar at, for example, 10 p.m., because we were coming through Fiddler's Race around 6, and say we could get there at 10 p.m., we have 5 meters of water. Okay, so that's plus the chart datum of 0 0.5. So we know we're going to be okay. And there you can subtract. So if we round, we say we've got two meter draft. Okay. We need three meters to make five meters. So you've got three meters to play with under the keel. Let's see what that looks like. Pictures. Here we have the charted depth of the bottom and the chart datum. 
approximating to lowest astronomical tide, the lowest tide ever recorded. That will be the charted depth. So those are those contours that we see here. The darker blue, the light blue. We also have dry night. And here is marked mean low water spring. So those are the figures that you're going to get in the tide tables. We also have our land survey, mean high water springs, and the highest astronomical tide, HAT. The highest astronomical tide is used for vertical clearance of bridges and overhead cables. So that's what we're working with today, is the chart datum and the highest astronomical tide. So this means that our mast from the top to the water level needs 19 meters. We have a bridge with a clearance of 15 meters. So, what we do is take our air draft, subtract the clearance, and we need 4 meters. So what we need to do is make sure that we get over the bar at high tide, find a place to anchor, until low tide, and then we can make it under the bridge. What time will that be? Well, we need less than four meters, which means we're going to find four meters here, go up to our neat line, and come across, and there you see we have a much smaller window of time roughly between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. we cannot make it under the bridge. So if we're crossing the bar at 10 p.m., we should wait about um, two hours. So crossing the bridge at midnight under the bridge, cross the bar at 10 under the bridge at midnight, and then we're home free into Black Mill Marina. I hope you found this relaxing. And that you've been able to enjoy the sounds of the paper and the pencil writing and scribbling and whispering. Remember to be good for yourself, be kind to others, and as always, 